Welcome to BassCast Radio, bringing you the best in local and national news in bass fishing, as well as interviews with some of the best anglers from all over the U.S. With your host, Brian Carter and Hank the Bass Geek. Sponsored by Wildware America, Z-Bait Company, Missile Baits, Battleborn Batteries, Conrad Brothers Marine, Taylor Man's Custom Lures, Vertical Lures, and Lynchburg Arms and Indoor Shooting Range. All right, guys, let's get this show going tonight. What is happening, everybody? Welcome to another great episode of Bass Cast Radio with my co-host, Mr. Bass Geek. What is happening, brother? You know, man, another day, another, you know, quarter, 50 cents, whatever the man wants to pay us to keep us down now. <laughs> Good gosh. You heard it here first. There you go. Man, oh, man, I hope everyone out there has had a great week. We hope you all had a chance last week to take a listen to uh, Mr. Seth fighter our last episode of bass cash radio it was a uh, as always an interesting episode with mr seth fighter <laughs> good good to talk with him it was but, good to... uh, he's a busy man he's he is a, busy a very man. busy man something happens when you when aoy so i mean you know wow but yes very busy man touring all over the world right now and uh you know making stops here and there and uh, we were lucky to get him on and like I said, I hope you guys were able to take a listen to him. Yeah, um, we got to hear Mark Zona eat in the background. I'm pretty sure I heard him chew twice. Yeah, I think so, too. <laughs> That's how interesting it was, boys and girls. That's how interesting it was. Let's just say that much. <clears throat> but we did get our <clears throat> questions answered. Thank you, Mr. Bruce Callis, for, for sending in those questions. And uh, we have one from another guest as well, but Bruce kind of stepped up to the plate. So I re really appreciate that. And um, like I said, it was an uh, in interesting show, if it wasn't one as it was. Um, yeah, Seth Brogan popped up another question. So thank you to them. Um, congratulations to Mr. Jacob Wheeler. Three this year trophies, guys. Three trophies man that dude is that dude listen that dude's I'm, I'm gonna say it right here he's the best he really is i mean he is like he is the new hey say you could say it you could say it, you could say it. I, damn i mean i know what she's gonna say kvd i mean he is he like, is and it's like he's like real silent it's like you know he's doing well you, you know he's and then you hear because i don't think he won like one of the he's like comes on real slow then wins one of the groups and then wins the whole damn thing so i mean it's like bam bam you know i think i don't you know we need to get him on because i want to say like just from me and from what i'm watching from him it's like so you guys know it's group a group b group a group mm -hmm. b it's almost like group a the first day he goes out is like a practice yeah I mean, he is like, you know, still practicing. And we've talked to a lot of anglers who have told us that day one for them is a practice, especially, the you know, for the like the uh, MPFL. You know, everyone fishes all three days. Mm -hmm. So it is kind of like a practice. You hope you have a good practice, but I mean, it is like a practice. And then it's like two days later, bam, he's up here. And then psh, final, bam, you know, won a whole daggone thing. Congratulations to him. Three trophies this year. I don't even know how much money they pay out, to be honest. But it's uh they they pay a hundred thousand dollars per uh, per event, mm. just just like the you know everybody else. Three hundred thousand for first place. Right, 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 right. Three hundred thousand dollars plus a bunch of other money for other crap. Golly, tax man is gonna love him. And then his YouTube channel. I yes. mean, brother, I'll tell you right now, that boy is making jack. Oh yeah. 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 So we need to get him on. I did reach, I will be honest. I did reach out to major league fishing who was, who was the fastest, I mean, slowest organization I've ever seen, <laughs> but, uh, I did reach out to them and I'm hoping that, um, they will respond back with his number and I'm, I probably got it somewhere, but I was just trying to do it the right way, but 
hopefully we can get him on. Um, also coming up next weekend, guys, is the uh, Major League Fishing Pro Series final event, their uh, championship. So uh, good luck to everyone that, uh, you know, will be a mm-hmm. part of that. And uh, hopefully we can uh, get the winner of that event on in a week or two after. I'm working on a lot of guests right now because we're wrapping, you know, I ain't going to say the year's wrapping up, but we're kind of wrapping up the year. So regular got, season's wrapping up for sure. That's true. That's true. Um, I've spoken to a couple of different people and uh, hopefully we can get everything worked out for the next two weeks. And uh, we'll have some awesome shows. And uh, by the way, they're both local anglers who have done really, really well this year. And uh, one of them told me that he can't even fish some events because he's not want too much daggone money. And I was like, hey, gosh, it must be nice. He must be. But that's overall. He's been fishing for a very, very long time, and he's a uh... heck of an angler. So, all right, guys, tonight, Mr. Gray Buck is going to be back with us again. We're going to do a little wrap-up show, and uh, he's going to talk about the season. I mean, I know he went for a little lull there, and uh, you know, but he came back on strong right there at the end of the year. And he's going to give us some. He's going to give us some great tips on the dog days of summer as well. So, want to thank him for coming on back with us and uh, everything he does for bass fishing and for the basscast.com. as always, guys, don't forget to check out Rumble. This is where all of our podcast shows are hosted. Uh, if you're not following, if you have not had the opportunity to check out Rumble, please make sure you head on over and check it out. I just want to say it's an alternative to YouTube. It's all up to you guys. If you like it, if you don't like it, the podcasts are still being uploaded on YouTube. So I'm not taking anything off of YouTube. But if you go to outdoorobsessionsradio.com, and you go to Basscast Radio, click on episode, it will be playing from Rumble. And I, I think it's worth a chance to take a look at it. All right, guys, if you missed last week's show, I want to make sure you guys know right here, Riverwise Fishing has stepped to, to the plate, and they are sponsoring Basscast Radio. Thank you to them. Um, River Riverwise Fishing, your source for quality fishing gear. They offer favorite baits in your go-to colors, such as Sexy Shad and Green Pumpkin, but have added some unique and effective patterns, such as Spring Fling, Pumpkin Spice, and Bullfrog. Who don't like Pumpkin Spice? We're getting ready to get in the fall right here. Listen, my my daughter calls me a basic white girl all the time. There you go. I'm a Pumpkin Spice kind of guy. Speaking of frogs, our signature three-inch micro frog has been the most productive and versatile baits in the lineup. Definitely a fan favorite. When it comes to the sun protection and being comfortable and on the water, check out our their line of apparel for anything from performance shirts to neck gaiters to beat the heat. Check us, check them out at riverwisefishing.com. And guys, I did a video. Hopefully you guys all checked it out. My bass cast weekend update a week ago. Check it out. There it is. Three inch baby. So head on over, check out Riverwise fishing. They got a lot of great baits and I actually, I want to pick a couple of them up myself. So maybe the next time I go fishing, I can use them. Whatever that's that thing. Be. That thing looks like it was ready to hop right out of your hand. It's, yes, sir. You it, definitely. I mean, it's real. It's realistic as crap. So, but uh, someone's going to take home a pack of those tonight. And uh, halfway through the show, we'll let you know how you can enter to take home a pack of their baits. So, guys, if you haven't checked out my Instagram page, I had the wonderful opportunity to go out and fish with Mr. Chad Green, uh, a great friend, local angler right here in Central Virginia, just started his guide business in the last month. So, Head on over, Chad Green. Make sure you check him out. And uh, we want to thank him for taking me and Danielle out. We had an awesome time, and uh, I caught the most fish. (laughs) I didn't catch nothing big, though. I mean, I caught like a a two-and-a-half pounder, maybe a two-pounder, and then three line Okay, here's the question, though. Did Danielle catch the biggest fish? Yes, she did. I knew it. It's how it always happens. Yes, she did. She caught a three pounder. So yeah, I don't take my wife fishing. (laughs) She caught (laughs) she caught fish number one and the largest fish. So 
it was an awesome time. We had a great time out on the water. Chad took care of us. So <clears throat> make sure you uh, check out Chad Green. And um, let me see here if I can find it really, really quick. I won't take a whole lot of time up here, but I'll try to make the announcement later. His all his information where you guys can go check it all out. Well, while so, you're looking, I'll go ahead. Oh, it's last last my, cast last cast guide service is what it's there called. You go. Last there you go. cast. That's it. I want to because I always think of bass cast. Last cast guide yeah. service. <laughs> you should be able to remember that. It rhymes. No, I know, I know. So, so now I, I do want to give myself a shout out. See, I was going to give you some filler right there, but then you remembered it too quick for me. Go ahead. But uh, I was going to say, by the way, guys, make sure you go check out. We had a video drop on YouTube, Bass Geek. Uh, it is talking about some giant spinnerbaits, like spinnerbaits that you guys that fish the grass, you wouldn't believe how big these things are. You're going to love them. Go check it out. All right, make sure you check out Bass Geek and check out his YouTube channel, Instagram channel. Um, by the way, I'm Brian Carter, Bass and Brian 73. If anybody want to know what that is, that's my age because I got a birthday next week. But uh, yeah, that's beside the point. So Bass and Brian 73, uh, Bass Cast, check it all out. We appreciate everything. That's right. And uh, guys, we're going to take a quick little break here and we'll be right back with Mr. Gray. All right, guys, we are back with our boy, Mr. Gray Buck. What is up, brother? Oh, not much. Out here in the garage, getting some tackle ready, getting ready for the next tournament, going back up to the St. Lawrence in a week and a half. So I'll yeah. be excited about that to go catch some more smallies. Heck yeah. So what's your next event? That's a Toyota series on the St. Lawrence. We're going out of Messina again, so we'll yeah. see uh, how far I decide to drive this time. Last time I went to basically the off limits, which was 90 something miles one way. Holy cow. And yeah, I did 194 miles on day two and I did 180 something on day three. It well, worked, that, but it, a, my back that's hurts. A, that's a whole, that's a whole lot of gas, man. Yeah. yeah. You had to fill up. It was, uh, I believe 440 I paid for gas on the water. Wow. <laughs> wow. They get you on the, get you when yeah. you pay. On yeah. the, uh, at the dock there it's like it would be nice you know like you see jeeps and stuff like that going up and down the road and they always have them little red fuel tanks on the side of the jeep just get you like three of them line them across the back of the boat just, just fill that's, it up that's, sure that's not boat legal oh crap <laughs> <laughs> we just need like you know how how you know the uh, air force has the uh, refueling planes yeah. we just need those boats <laughs> that'd be great pull along <laughs> Uh, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, man. If you guys didn't know, man, we just wrapped up what two weeks ago? A week ago? The 2021. The 2021 Tackle Warehouse Pro Series. And um did you kind of um kind of started to come on a little bit at the end of the year, man? Yes, sir. Yeah. It, the last two were good it came in i think 27th at the potomac and then uh the st lawrence was 19th so mm -hmm. it was finished the year strong it was the problem was the two bad ones were really bad and yes. kind of killed me for the point season mm -hmm. um i missed the title championship by 16 points which is 16 oh. places and so basically the when i came in 147th at ufala if i came in 130th I would have made the championship. <laughs> so <Man. laughs> makes, wow. you, makes you realize how hard you have to fish all year. Cause that's, it's one fish essentially. It, Cause yeah. I didn't catch a limit either day at you fall. And I catch one fish. I'm going to move up 15 spots, 16 wow. spots. So Holy it cow. is what it is. Um, <sighs> I'm happy. I finished the year strong. I got some momentum going into these Toyota series. Um, yeah. I got whatever the last three tournaments I've cast a check in that I fished or four actually. So it, got a good little roll going i'm getting to spend some time up in new york where i like fishing and got a little bit of an advantage over the southern boys <laughs> heck yeah that's what we're talking about all right so like you said it was an up and down season we apologize we missed you for two events but we said we, we would come back and do a highlight show because it, it really what what do you think really happened buck i mean i don't you know i don't want to say what happened was it 
a bad practice or was it you know what's that you fall yeah yeah no you fall in practice the first 20 minutes i had three fish and i had a, almost seven pounder oh wow <laughs> wow what happened was they dropped the water two foot because there was supposed to be a big storm coming mm-hmm. and i was fish i was catching all these fish on a buzz bait i was taking a buzz bait with that z-man billy goat and i was throwing it back wow. in that grass and it it's about two and a half foot of water they had on it so by the time the tournament started i had about six inches on it and wow. those fish were gone and i couldn't relocate them i it was uh, it still frustrates me I'd, I'd like to have it over again i don't know what i would do different honestly but right i'd figure something out it i caught one fish on the first day and i it was probably 30 minutes into the day 40 minutes into the day and i went seven mm. hours without another bite and it was Ooh. just it was i felt bad for the marshal i had with me that day <laughs> that's just an average day for me right there it's <laughs> holy cow yeah. all right so i got right here if this is the 20 i'm looking at the 2021 tackle warehouse pro circuit mr gray buck all your photos scrolling on down here um you finished up with 784 points overall mm-hmm. rank of 58th and let's see here all right so St. Lawrence River, you finished 19th. Um, like I said, uh, I got to see you on the Potomac, so that yep. was awesome. Yeah, that was cool. Uh, um, I drove just to see you. Best friends. That's what it is, because <laughs> I, I really did. I told Danielle, she's like, so there was like another event that I could have went to, and I'm like, you know you really want to go see Gray, and you really want to go up there. And I was like, yes. So she booked me a room, and – Boom, I made it just in time. I made it like 30 minutes prior to weigh-in. Oh, perfect. So, and then you had uh, Lake Ufala, like you're saying, the 147th place. Yep. Lake Murray, you finished 46th. Lewis Smith Lake was 59th. And yep. then Lake Okeechobee. Yep. I'm not mad about Okeechobee. I was in the right area in Okeechobee. I just didn't get the bites. Right. <laughs> There was so many. I think there was four of the guys in the top ten that I was fishing around. It just it didn't happen for me. Oh, I don't wow. know what the deal was there, but you fall on mad about Okeechobee. I made the right choices. It just didn't happen. You fall, I was lost, and that it goes that way sometimes. And I know the ones that get me the most are those hot summer like offshore ledge TVA deals, and mm-hmm. I need to get better at it. I should honestly go down there in the summer and really put some time in, but it's hard to do that when I got my smallmouth tournaments in the summer yeah. and I know I can drive four hours North and go and crush them or right. drive down South. And I got to go melt and try to figure it out, which at some point, I, like I said, I need to do it to get better at well, it's we, we, me a couple times now. We had an angler years. on last week, you know, he, he has, he, he, you know, he had the same issue that you have and he made the trip down, sweated a lot and he, he got AOY. So look at that. Oh, and sorry. Plus, Gray, you you know a guy that's 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 what I love to do. <laughs> oh, all right. And you're not that far. You're you're like not even all the way down there. I oh, have yeah. to drive to Georgia for that. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. I, right. I like it. That's what I do. I'm like three hours from Chick. I'd, I'd go. I I make trips down there a lot. All right. Well, T V A. I'm coming. We got to make that set up and go figure it out. Good it's, deal. Good deal. We want you to improve, man. Dude, you're an awesome angler. I mean, you've had, you know, you know, the, for everybody who doesn't know Gray Buck, and if you don't, you're crazy. I mean, he's fished a Bassmaster Classic. I mean, he's had a heck of a career so far. Last year, let's see here, last year he finished third overall. I mean, where's all the money? I'm trying to think. There was a post up here about how much. Oh, $331,000 out of 87 events fished he spent that all that on gas yeah where's it all at st st lawrence <laughs> driving like, that. what happened to them? <laughs> 190 miles <laughs> i knew i at the st lawrence i knew i needed to make the top 20 to get that extra 500 bucks to break even on the <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh my goodness so talk to us about the season man you know like I said, there were some ups, there were some downs and, you know, we finished strong at the end and, uh, you know, like you said, it's good leading up to the, you know, to your, 
next what how many events are you gonna fish up there two or three i got what do i like i have the st lawrence left and then i got another potomac river um hopefully two on the potomac and then one more the last one's on pickwick that'll be the uh, what's that called now the toyota championship toyota that's championship yeah. so that's assuming i make it i'm sitting in I think I came in 27th, 28th or something for the Toyota on Champlain. That was the right. first one. Should hopefully catch them at uh, the St. Lawrence and then Potomac. I know decently well. Cool. So we'll, we'll see. All right. So talk you to us about that, it. Yeah, you make that October championship. That'll be an interesting event. What what time uh, in October is that? I believe it's the third week of October. It's towards the end. That's going to be an interesting event. I want to catch some of those giant smallies you guys got down there. <laughs> yeah, that that'll be an interesting event. It it might prove to be a little tougher than than what a lot of people think because okay. you know I I know a lot of times you know like the real fall bite don't really start kicking in until about the last week of October, even into the first couple of weeks of uh, November. Yeah, it, it so hasn't really south. been. Yeah, it hasn't really been getting that cold around here. I mean, even into december or almost still pushing mid 70s 80 degree and then yeah. some of that's water temperature so yeah that makes it tough i know i fished uh the toyota championship a couple of years ago on gunnersville and i believe that was the first week of november and mm -hmm. that was brutal like i worked for bites and <laughs> practice i caught a real big one right at the end it was almost an eight pounder but mm. other than that it was like you were happy when you were catching two and a half three pounders just yeah that's, that's out of limit. Yeah, that's farther south than me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because I, I fished some Highlands reservoirs, you know, Cherokee and Douglas right. and yeah. those lakes too. And I, th those lakes are a little closer to me. So that's that's going to be like or the real fall bite really doesn't really start to pick up until about the end of October. So that's going to be an interesting, that could be a tough, tough time. Wasn't that your PB, that eight pounder, if I remember correctly? Mine? Yeah. No, nah, I caught a nine and a half down at Rayburn last That's year. That's right. That was it. That was it. That yeah. was it. I caught two oh. nines this year. I got one at Okeechobee and another Dang. one. Dang. I caught some mm. big fish this year. And I caught a seven pounds. I finally caught my seven pound smallie too. Got that. The my God. That is, that is awesome. Woo. Yeah. I've been trying forever to get a seven pound smallie. And I, it was funny because it wasn't even quite 21 inches long, but it was 18 and a half <laughs> round. And it, it was just thick. <laughs> I hear that. You know, I, I've not I've not had the opportunity to fish up north for northern smallies any. Yeah. What's so funny about that is literally I caught a 24 inch five pound smallmouth down here in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that sucker could be ten up in uh. Ontario. Holy cow! I know. So show us some of the baits that helped you, uh, you know, pocket some of these checks in 2021. Yeah. So. It was funny. I was actually looking at, I was working on uh, my sponsor package for next year and I was looking, just going through the tournaments and just, I was curious like what I caught them on in each of them to tell people about and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't one bait that I was like consistently catching them on. Like the chatter bait, I caught key fish in each one with, but it wasn't like I had one where I just threw it the entire time and then I went to the next place and threw it right. the entire time. So it was definitely a little different. I was, I guess quickly to go through it, like, uh, go for it. Okeechobee, I was flipping that Z-Man goat on a three-quarter ounce tungsten weight, that angler tungsten weight that we yeah. were talking about earlier this year. They, that was what was getting most of my bites. And then I went to Eufaula, and actually I have one here. I was going to show you guys about something else. I was throwing after the spotted bass that were suspended. They were out over – it didn't really matter um, how deep, but I was throwing the Z-Man. Where would it go? Uh, there it is. That's, yeah. that's the minnows. It's a three-inch. I was throwing that just on a ball head jig, catching spotted bass. So completely 180 from uh, Okeechobee. Then we went to Murray, and I was skipping a Z-Man Zinker Z, just wacky rigged underneath docks, and I was catching a lot of spawners. Um, I also caught a couple on a um, the Z-Man Streaks, which is like their fluke version. Right. At, they were just there chasing the busting on uh, the bluebacks. Where did we go after that? Uh, Eufaula. I was again. Actually, there. Lake Murray. Yeah, that was I mean, like I'm sorry, are you, going, are you going up or are you going down? Yeah, I'm working my way up. So then okay, then you, that was, you went to uh, Potomac. You follow was next, I believe. No? If you're yeah. going up, you went from, yeah, Lake Murray, Lake Ufala, and then the Potomac yep. River. Yeah, so Ufala, I actually caught them punching too, but I caught so few fish, we won't even count that. 
Okay, we'll <laughs> skip. <laughs> and then we went back to at uh, the Potomac. I was catching a lot on a swim jig. I was throwing that Z-Man with the turbo crawls on the back. And that's just good because it it's a swim jig. It has those legs kicking like real fast on there. But the yeah. perch don't rip the legs off like they do on other baits. Just being that elastic, it's real stretchy. Yeah. So yeah. That was That's a great bait for them. They actually have a new one called a Helicrawl coming out. Um, and it's a little different than the turbo crawl because it's instead of having like the tight legs like this, they're going to spread out like and flare a little bit more. So they'll be out to the side and like kind of wiggling like that, which I like a lot on a swim jig. But um, that was how I got them up there. And then St. Lawrence, was a, that was kind of a mixed match. I was got on a jerk bait and a drop shot. And I was drop shot in that Z Mint. Um, uh, where where do I have? I don't have it right here. Um, the trick shot. Those three. Oh, yeah, the trick shot. Yeah. So, yeah, it was just like, it was funny. I, it wasn't like I had one dominant bait this year, but I think it's because we went to so many different fisheries this time. It wasn't mm-hmm. like we were fishing offshore the whole time. We were fishing shallow. It wasn't a straight spawn year. So, mm-hmm. it was, it was definitely a little different, but it was fun that way that you got to use a lot of different things. You had to be pretty versatile to catch them. Yeah, definitely versatile. So, what is that? What would you kind of take away from that? You know, that, that, this sort of year, you know, from start to finish, what what do you really feel like the overall lesson that you pulled away from from this year? And, and was it just about the diversity? Yeah, I would say that was the biggest thing. <clears throat> and then just consistency is I had, was very consistent for all of them. I never had a – the 19th was good, but I never had a great tournament. But I had those two bad ones that wrecked the year for points. And I didn't have that last year. I was just consistent throughout it all. So I just got to kind of – polish the edges a little bit and make sure I'm ready for those. But I think um, next year, I think we go to Rayburn, the Harris chain, and then Pickwick and Gunnersville. And they're all, um, I guess they'll all be pre-spawn and probably spawn. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be earlier in the year. So I won't have any of that offshore deals really going on, but I'm looking forward to that. Cause I haven't been to Gunnersville since the classic. And yes, Pickwick I've never been to, but hopefully I'll be there in October and be able to um, dial that place in a little bit. Woo. You guys hear that? Whoa. Yeah. We got a pretty Holy bad storm going. That cow. Was that, that was crazy. That was. That was a real one there. <laughs> Shoo. Send it our way. We need some of that rain. <laughs> Holy cow. Uh, yeah, that would make me jump. <laughs> yeah. I wow. think you did jump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you know earlier earlier we talked about you know your strengths and your weaknesses and things of that nature um do you feel it you know you did say you thought that there was room for improvement do you have a plan i mean is there a goal or you know or you know i've been playing with it a little bit around home so like offshore largemouth okay when you get over i would say 15 foot that's kind of a weakness that i know i have and I worked on it earlier this summer back home. We have a little reservoir and I did a bunch of idling out there. I kind of figured out how they were setting on these stumps and channel swings and like a deep diving crankbait. I'm not, I don't do it a lot is the biggest yeah, thing. Yeah, I've never <laughs> heard of that word in your whole entire, my whole entire four years <laughs> of knowing you. It's like, what is that? So um, I put some time in with that. I'm going out on Monday with a buddy that does it a lot back home. And he's been catching them out in 15 to 25. So we're going to go yeah. throw some big plugs and try to dial me in a little bit better on that. I could, with that Lawrence, that active target, now you can see him sitting on the stones oh, and yeah. channel swings and all that. I, I could pitch a drop shot at him and catch him, but I want to get better at throwing that big crank beat. So I, I want to put the time in. We're going to learn how to do it. Heck yeah. That's awesome. It's definitely good. All right. So. Like, like like Bass Geek said, you know, the momentum and all that good stuff that you were, you were having, you know, besides the bad tournaments, you had a heck of a good season. Another good season, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, I was overall happy with it. Um, when you cast checks in four out of the six, I made three of the six top 50 cuts. So that's all. It's all positive. It's just, oh, you got to keep catching them at all of them. And hopefully again next year, I can get back on that streak. Awesome. Uh, you did. Yeah, you did mention the 2022 season. What? Which one of those lakes are you looking forward to the most, man? Where we end the year, we go to the James River, and then yes, you go. Do you have the last one pulled up? I can't remember. Champlain. Yes, Champlain. I don't have it pulled up, but I can. Yeah, that Champlain is the last one. And that 
it's a lake that I know decently well. I've spent a lot of time there. And it always just like seems to get me a little bit. I, even with the, um, the Toyota series that we just had there, I came in 20 something and I had an 18 pound bag the first day and like a 16 and a half the second day. But I worked to catch those fish. It wasn't <laughs> like I went out there and busted on them. And I'm going to put some time in it up there this spring, do a bunch of idling before the grass grows and really try to dial it in because I know different parts of that lake decently well. I don't know any of it great so you end up running a lot there and yeah. it spreads me out i don't have enough time to fish each area mm. so i want to try to learn a section of that lake and like have 30 spots that i know i can run and go catch a fish and just kind of get a nice rotation going a little milk run and that's how i typically do well at these northern lakes is that you know there's a boulder in the grass over there there's a rock pile and 20 foot over there and you guys keep rotating through and you figure out the day the depth and all that and i haven't like I said, I fish Champlain a lot, but I haven't put that all together. So I'm looking go. forward to that. All right. So here's the schedule real quick, guys. Uh, Sam Raver and Reservoir kick off January the 27th. Uh, they come to Florida, the Harris Chain of Lakes. Uh, that's April, It's uh, March the 13th. And then the Pickwick Lake uh, in Tennessee, April the 21st. And then they come on up to Alabama in May which won't be too hot, but it's starting to get pretty, starting to get pretty warm dinner in Alabama about that time. So they come up to Alabama. Um, and then they come to our, my home state and, uh, I will see you there. I'm going to put it on the calendar, uh, June the 16th to the 19th to be on the James river, which is about the same distance as it was for me when I come to see you at the Potomac. That's the one that I've been my nemesis over the years too. I'm gonna the, I'm gonna get that place. The James. That's gonna be my I'm getting that one back this year. I'm looking do you forward think to that. it's do you think it's because the 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 water does play a lot of tricks with you? Yeah. Well, the two times I've been there, we once was like late August, the other one was I think middle of September, and it was 150 degrees, it felt like outside. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was 103 here today, so and it's <laughs> August, so yep, I understand that. Uh, yeah. Then you head on up to June, though. Then you head on up to your area, Lake Champlain, mm -hmm. in uh, July, and then the title, which you will be at the title next year. I you're won't miss on, that one, huh? I promise I won't miss that one. You're gonna, yeah, you're <laughs> gonna be on the St. Lawrence River, and you better not miss that one. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. I, that'll. <clears throat> That'll hurt very badly if I don't make that one. So we got a couple that we got to get through, but I'll figure it hey, out. Good them. momentum. Good, good into the season this year. You know, with yep. your last three or four events, you yep. know, you, you're, 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 you'll, you'll get there, man. It's going to happen. We got faith. We got That's faith. Right. <laughs> and he better be at the St. Lawrence River. All no right. Pressure. So, so we thought we'd take off in another direction after we talked about the season there for a little bit and talk about the 103 degree day weather dog days of summer right here in central Virginia. Hey, you guys all know, uh, Smith Mount Lake is a clear body of water and that is always fun to fish this time of the year, but we want to get a few tips from Mr. Gray Buck here and, uh, talk to him about fishing the dog days of summer, man. Yeah, so when it gets hot and tough, that's usually when I try to do a little bit of downsizing. Um, something I rigged up here to show you guys is the it's made by Z-Man. Where are we at? Right um, this is the TRD, but it's a tube. So it's a TRT tubes. I don't know if you guys have ever seen those. It's a mm -hmm. little different than just throwing the regular three inch. It's even a little bit finessier than that. Um, I throw it on a Hayabusa. That's the brush easy. It's a one tenth ounce. So it's real light. So you get a real natural slow fall with this it'll spiral down and then it, it'll sit and it sits straight up and down like the last tank does. And it's really good for catching those uh, real finicky fish. I use this a lot, especially like river fishing. Um, cause it drifts right along in the current. Um, you can fish it in lakes too, but it just take, takes a little bit of time to get down there. But I like that real slow, natural fall that it has. And it's just like snack size. So everybody likes to eat it. What's your setup? Something is that something you're going to do is look for some current right now? Yeah. So if you find that current, you got a little bit more oxygen in the water and that mm -hmm. gets, especially small mouth, it gets them set up on a large mouth too. Um, so even if you go 
down your guys' way, if you find a little feeder creek that's coming in, it doesn't have to be big, but those fish will push way back in there. And, um, it can be special. Like you'll find some big, big largemouth that get back in a tiny little creek that you can barely get your boat up in. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your setup when you, uh, when you fish that tube? I throw that on a favorite. It's a 741 uh, medium light. It's a jackhammer. And then it has a 2,500 favorite jackhammer reel. It's got okay. 15 pound braid to a, usually I'll do an eight pound uh, cigar gold label um, leader. So it's okay. just, it keep it pretty simple. It's my basic small mouth setup or yeah, I usually use that one just cause it, you can throw it a little bit further cause it's a light head. There you go. All right. What's your thoughts on fishing some clear water this time of year, man? That's where I would pick up that uh, Z-Man minnows we were talking about mm-hmm. earlier. That little three-inch bait, it mimics all the little owl wives, shad, whatever you guys got going on in your lakes. And um, if you have any forward-facing sonar like that Lorance active target, you can find those bite balls, and then you can find the spotted bass, smallmouth, largemouth that are busting on them, chasing them under the surface. And you could throw that right out there and reel it right through them, just nice, slow, and steady. And I catch a lot of fish on that bait. There you go. What's your setup for that? I throw a medium heavy. So my favorite rod is a um, it's a 721 medium heavy hex. That's like their top of the end line rod, but super light. So I can make real long casts. I can fish it all day, not have like, any fatigue from it. So it, I, same thing. I throw a 15 pound line and usually an eight pound leader. All right. Any more summertime tips you have for us, Frank? Yeah, the other thing that you can do is if you go up shallow and find some laydowns on channel swings, you got that deep water, they'll slide up into those laydowns to feed throughout the day. Um, something I just had one boxed up here, that's that uh, SB57 by Ooh, Bill yes, Willis. That's, that's my favorite color. And maybe add oh. a little bit more red to it. Okay, yeah, this one's called Mustard Crawl, but I got a couple that got a little bit more red in them too. But you take that. This bait walks through laydowns better than anything I've ever used. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Um, so I, I do that early in the spring, and then I also do it during the summer because you're not going to get a lot of bites doing it, but when you do, you, it's usually a big old largemouth that's sitting in one of those laydowns that's waiting for something to come by them real slow. And this thing, you can crawl through there and just pick it all apart. So that's how I'd go out there and catch my kicker during the heat of the summer. And what's that called again? It's made by Bill Lewis, and it's a SB57. All right. Good looking bait. Yeah. There you go. All right. So, cranking. You know, everybody knows pretty much a heavy line, but what do you like to use, man? I use 12 pound line on mine. You should use 12. Um, okay. Yeah. That just gets it down a little bit deeper. Um, All right. If I'm throwing around these lay downs and if it's like really thick, then I'll bump it up to 15. But like okay. if you get, once you get a 17, then it's not going to be running as deep. Mm-mm. That's more of a spring sort of deal. Um, if I'm trying to keep it up there and it's real muddy or anything like that, but I like 12 most often. All right. Your gear ratio. Usually a six, three to one or a seven, three to one. Um, it, I like to keep it moving normally, but you can slow it down with that six, three to one. Seven, four rod. Um, no, I usually seven. use a seven foot. I okay. have a, it's the phantom cranking. It's a glass rod that yeah. my favorite makes. They're, it's actually a really good rod. They're only 150 bucks, so it's a good, like, economical rod for everybody. Mm-hmm. Good entry level one, and it being parabolic and made out of glass, when those fish get those trebles stuck in their face, they're not gonna be able to throw it. So it, it's really worth checking out. I would. I have four of them, I think. It's nice. He's single. For a guy that doesn't crank a lot, <clears throat> a lot of rods for cranking. That, that, that is, is man. Rod that rod is. <laughs> um. <clears throat> Now we're talking about the dog days of summer, man. What is, what is, you know, always used to have all the tricks back in the day. We always talked about putting in your live well, keeping the fish cool. You know, what's some of the stuff that gray buck does during these dog days of summer? Take, take care of yourself on top of that, man. Yeah. You Never less the drink, fish. Drink and stay hydrated. That's, that's probably the biggest thing you can do on the day of there. Uh, drink lots of water, throw Gatorade or something in there, get a little, mm-hmm. some electrolytes, but when I'm taking care of the fish, um, I like to use that uh, TH Marine G juice. You put that in your live well a couple times throughout the day, and it kind of keeps them a little bit healthier, especially when it's hot. Um, right. You can put ice in there throughout the day, depending on how hot it really is, especially if you're catching them from deep water. Mm-hmm. The water's cool down there. 
people and you bring them up to the surface in your live wells, it's going to be almost essentially whatever the temperature of the surface of the water is. Yeah. Right. So you got to be careful with them that way. Like if I if I'm fishing during the summer and it's not a tournament, I let them go right away. There's no reason yeah. to keep them up there. Oh yeah. Get the hero shot or anything like that during the summer. You got to uh, keep those fish protected and put them back down as quick as you can. There you go. Any more summertime tips for us, brother? No, I think that's probably about it. Um, the only other thing you can do is spend a lot of time idling and looking at your Lawrence electronics and just learning what's out there offshore and trying to find those deeper fish that are schooled up. Yes, heard it. I agree. Yes, sir. What you got for him, Dansky? Man, that's really it. I, we appreciate you stopping by. We always love talking to you. Always have a good time with you, man. We're yes. rooting for you. Rooting for you in your last four. So, you know, got to make that championship. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we know you're going to. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, that's, right. that's it, man. All right, guys, before we let him go. I gotta, I gotta make this announcement. I'm like, we, we're just sitting here laughing and having a good time. We gotta think about this real quick. Uh, if you guys haven't heard, new sponsor, Riverwise Fishing, and we're gonna be giving away a pack of the baits. Like I said in the announcement, the micro frog. So all you have to do is go in at, below the podcast, type in micro frog, and then share the post, and you get your opportunity to win an awesome pack of baits from Riverwise Fishing, and check that frog out here i'll hold the feet there you guys go there you go so check them out make sure you check out everything that they have online and that uh, we really really appreciate them sponsoring bass cast radio tonight so make sure you guys head on over and check them out um buck hopefully we could be able to get you back on after some of these toyota events yeah. but uh shout out to your sponsors man because we never yeah. let you, we don't get you to do it enough, and it's our fault, and we apologize, and we suck. But <laughs> no, I I can't do it without them. It's they've made it. I guess this is year five they made it through now on the pro circuit, and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, I I'm super happy, like we were talking about earlier, that Bass Cat. This is the first year I've been running it, and I put it to the through everything. I never ran any of my other boats as far as I did in that St. Lawrence tournament. And it held up perfect. That Mercury engine, it's awesome. I got that jack plate on there mm -hmm. from TH that really lets you do those micro adjustments as you're on the water there. Mm -hmm. If you see a big weight coming, you can bury your jack plate. Make sure you keep that in the water and keep you running strong and fast. Um, favorite rods, as always, they've got yep. all sorts of great things. If you want to check them out, I have a on my YouTube channel <laughs> called Favorite Rod for the Job. It goes over different rod models, what I use it for um and it gives you a price point on them and there's a discount code on there as well to get 20 percent off that if you're interested in checking them out um i there's so many of them that help me out here z-man z-man we talk about we them. cannot talk hey. about z-man enough z-man no, <laughs> i can't <laughs> there's some cool things coming out from z-man too if you haven't seen it i cast yep i believe there's 10 new baits they have holy and cow like i was telling you that helicrawl that thing's it's going to be legit. Um, they have another one that's called the Hercules. It's a big swim bait, it's a uh, five inch swim bait. And it's, it's going to be good. It's got a top hook in it and you're going to be able to crawl that thing around and through grass beds and whatnot and catch some big fish. Um, I'm really looking forward to that one. I will have to admit, you know, I, I, I don't, I'll be honest. The only Z man product I have over here is the, uh, that little um, crap. What is that thing called? We'll bait about that big. Everybody put Ned Rig. Yeah, the Finesse TRD. There's good ones though. Yeah. That's they TRD are. Too. The, uh, they have the TRD Crawl. They got all sorts of good uh, Z Band but for They Ned have Rig. some oh, yeah. innovative products. They really yeah. do. So if you don't own jackhammers, you're you're not doing something right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I agree. Well, they're not in my champagne dreams budget, but we'll see what we can do. I mean, <laughs> 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 sweet tea right here. <laughs> yeah now bill lewis uh, talking about the sp57 we have a mr12 coming out which is a 12 foot diving crankbait i just got the samples the other day i caught two fish up at cayuga on it um i'm starting to figure it out we're learning we're doing a couple more tweaks to it but it that's going to be available i believe in december or january hopefully. that's awesome um nice. so that's a cool new bait they got coming um so there's lots of goodies. 
there you guys go again always make sure you head on over check out gray bucks youtube channel he he puts out he puts a lot of work into it and you know he puts out a video after every day almost isn't it i do a one after every day of the tournament um you're not gonna I, get I, that I, anywhere I, else because everybody else wraps it all up into one quick 30 minute show buck is like in depth so you better be following him guys <laughs> Yeah, I like to go talk about each day, kind of what happened, and then I give you the highlights that you can watch that you'll see each of the fish I catch throughout the day and where I caught them, how I caught them. So when I talk about a bait and I tell you I'm using it, you can see I'm actually using it. <laughs> so you don't get that with everybody. And um, I got, I usually try to do two or three videos a week if I can get it out. It, nice. Some weeks, some weeks when I'm traveling, I kind of start slacking and you might only get one here one there and then all of a sudden you'll get four or five real quick but consistency might not be my strong suit but there's a lot of them on there and there's a lot of good info <laughs> it's all good man i'm, I'm watching uh, i've been watching catching up not really catching up but watching some videos and from a bass master elite angler and it's like he just put one out from the classic the other day and we're like five events after that and i'm like oh, really? <laughs> what in the world dude but i understand he probably like you know he waited till pretty much the season was over and you know that used to be yep. the way that used to be the way fishing was, but now since uh, major league fishing, it's right now here in your face. Oh yeah. So, but yeah, it's all good. I, I can watch them all day long. It doesn't matter. So guys, check him out. Make sure you guys follow Gray Buck on Instagram. And like I said, hit the YouTube channel and make sure you hit the follow the like and the bell while you are there. So that way you never miss an episode. So thank you brother for coming on. And, uh, Thank you for being a big sponsor of the basscast.com and you rock, man. Hopefully we'll uh, get you see, see what's, see what's happening after the next couple of Toyota events with you. All right. Sounds good. Thanks for having me guys. Good talking to you. Always man. Thank you. All right. All right, guys, we appreciate Mr. Gray Buck for coming on and talking with us tonight. It's always great to have him on. The conversation is awesome. It just freaking flows. We talk about fishing. We talk about life. Uh, we talk about 2022 guys is right around the corner, but, uh, you know, and you know, he's fishing the Toyota series the rest of this year. So a lot of more great fishing left for Mr. Great buck and uh, hopefully he'll cash a lot more checks and, uh, Oh yeah. We can get him back on the show. So, uh, thank you for him for coming on and talking with us. And, uh, guys, he's an awesome dude. One of the most you, you what you see is what you get yeah he's a good dude he's Great fun dude. to talk to it's just like talking to one of your buddies that, and that's you know that's why you know some of these episodes i used to call them conversations and that's kind of why <laughs> because it really was just a conversation of hey how'd you do this past weekend oh i did great what fishing and that's what i called him on and you know blah 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 and it wasn't no there's no real i had 12 questions let's answer ask them yeah it was just yeah. like let's go with the flow all right, guys, if you haven't heard, we are sponsored by Riverwise Fishing, your source for quality fishing gear. Uh, they offer your favorite baits in your go-to colors, such, such as Sexy Shad and Green Pumpkin, but have added some unique and effective patterns, such as Spring Fling, Pumpkin Spice, and the Bull Frog. Uh, speaking of frogs, their signature three-inch micro frog has been the most productive and versatile baits in the lineup. Definitely a fan favorite. When it comes to sun protection and being comfortable on the water, check out their line of apparel as well. For anything from performance shirts to neck gaiters to beat the heat, check them out, riverwisefishing.com. And uh, like I said, guys, we're going to be giving away a pack of baits after each one of these shows so we drop the code all you got to do is do what the instruction said enter the code and hit the share button so special thank you to them and uh there they are get a whole pack looks good if i was right, a bad guys. side eat them you got that right <laughs> I know. I wish I had them up on the river a couple of weeks ago, oh. river wise, but I wish I'd had them up on the river a couple of weeks ago. I can tell you that much. Like I said on a little ounce, like Ned had red weight with the thing mm -hmm. just kind of flow on down the river. 
So, uh, guys, before we go, always, man, make sure you guys head on over and check out the Bass Geek channel on YouTube. Um, thank you for everyone who checks out thebasscast.com. Um, I know it's to be too late, but the Basscast Kayak Series, when this goes up tomorrow, uh, will be on the James River this weekend. And uh, the following next event, we're going to be on Leesville Lake and then our championship classic, whatever you guys want to call it, will be back on Smith Mountain Lake. And uh, I was looking at the calendar, mid-September, the Bass Cast Tournament Series kicks back into gear on Smith Mountain Lake. So really, really excited to be back out on the water for that. <coughs> and uh, thank you guys for being a part of us, and uh, we appreciate all you do. And uh, We appreciate it, for sure. Have a wonderful night, everyone. And we'll be talking to you guys same time, same channel next week. You've been listening to BassCast Radio, the best in local and national bass fishing news. To listen to more episodes, check us out on all the podcasting networks. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, thebasscast.com, and BassCast News.